Hello everyone. So in today's video, what I want to do is I want to show you how to bake and set up opacity and opacity map in the Substance Painter. And I'm going to be showing you how to do this using an ID map. And so this is how I usually do it if I want to uh, get transparency from a, a high poly model, for example. So here my, I have my... So this plane is going to be my low poly model. And this is going to be my high poly model. So to bake an opacity map or an ID map, what you want to do is you want to give color to your high poly model. So that that's going to be your ID map. And so in Maya, you can do it different ways. You can apply vertex colors or you can use the material. So in this case, I'm just going to apply a new material to my high poly. And I'm going to change the color of that. And this can be whatever you want. And then I'm going to assign the material to the uh, to the other mesh here. So in this case, what I want is I want the um, orange to be my transparent stuff, and then um, these pipes right here. I want that to be my what I can actually see in the in the model. So I'm going to give this another color. Okay, so there we have it. So now that's going to be my, so the orange is going to be transparent and then everything else is not. So let me export that. Let me export my low poly first. So it's just a plane in this case, just for testing. Then export this as the high poly. And so now in Substance Painter, you want to make a new project and then select your low poly. Start that. Okay, so, so in Substance Painter, here's my plane. And what I want to do is I want to go to Bake Maps. And I just want to bake my ID in this case so that I can show you the transparency and opacity, how to do that. I'll change this to 1024. And then under ID Map, uh, so here's what you can change the type of ID that you're baking. So if you add a color to your model through vertex colors in Maya, you would uh, keep that. In this case, I use the material in Maya, so I'm going to use material. So if I bake that, oh, actually, let me make sure you add your high poly. Okay, so now I'm going to bake that. And for my settings here, I'm just leaving this as the defaults. Um, usually changing these doesn't make a huge difference, except for the anti-aliasing. I'm going to show you what that does. Okay, so let me press the B key so I can switch to my ID map here. And right now I'm just using lines because I need to probably increase my frontal and my rear distance as well so I can see the whole thing. Okay, so here's my ID map. and. So you can see here, if you get really close, you can see that it's a little bit jaggedy. Um, if you want that to be a bit smoother, you can change the anti-aliasing. You can increase this a bit. So that makes it a bit smoother. I personally, either way is fine. Usually for the ID, I just disable the anti-aliasing and I clean up that differently. So let me show you. So I'm going to press M to see my material. And so in Substance Painter to see opacity, what you want to do is you want to add in under the channels, you want to add the opacity map. So now you have that in and we go to 3D only. And then here under your texture layer, you add a material. So this is going to be without opacity. And then I'm going to duplicate this. This is going to be with opacity. I only want um, this. So I'm going to set that to zero. Obviously it's not previewing because you have to change the material that you're using. So by default, Substance Painter comes with a uh, PBR metal rough. You want to change that to either the alpha blending or the alpha with test. So let's, let's try this one. Okay, so now we can't see anything because this layer is uh, affecting the whole thing. So I'm going to add a black mask on it and then here what you can do to just use the ID map is just do a right click, go to add color selection, and then pick one. And I think we're going to pick the blue, or actually it's the other one. Let's pick 
the orangey color and so now as you can see it's pretty much masking based on the id map and so now we can see a little bit closer here what it looks like and like i mentioned uh, there's some yaggedy edges and what i do to fix that to get if you want a smoother opacity what you can do is here add a filter and add a blur and so this is going to essentially it's almost like the anti-aliasing so it gives it a bit of a blur right and then if you want it to go tighter to go back to the what it was you can add another filter which is a sharpen and you can increase this a little bit just to get it back to where it was so it's still a little bit jaggedy it depends on how much blur you add to it So this is without anything then you can kind of use the blur just to make it a little bit cleaner so that's pretty much how you can not necessarily bake an opacity map you just can't really do that in substance painter like you can in substance designer um, but this is essentially the workaround for that and so that's using the ids and let me show you another one from zbrush so let me show you the same thing using zbrush this time so in ZBrush, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to export a plane here. So it's going to be my low poly model. So I'm going to go to FBX export and export my low poly. I'm going to hide it now. And now I'm going to export my high poly. So in ZBrush, you want to do, what you want to do is you want to add a color. So you want to fill your sub tool with color. And uh, usually I like to use a plugin called from automatic 3d tools which essentially has a tool here where you can pretty much assign a random color to a sub tool so if i click here to do that as you can see here because my ropes here are one sub tool and then the plane in the background is one sub tool it just added a random color to it if you wanted to do this manually i really like doing that through that tool because it just saves time but if you want to do it manually what you can do is just here under the color you can choose whatever color you want and then just fill the object it's going to do the, the, the same thing but you have to do it manually so i'm going to do that so essentially there what we're doing is you adding vertex colors and so we're going to export now this is going to be my plane high and just to show you that we can do the exact same thing and then let's bake the id map but this time we we're going to choose so it's 1024 and then let's add our high poly and this time we're going to use the vertex colors because that's pretty much what we did in zbrush as you can see here uh, that's what we get and these are the ropes let me just bake a normal map so we can see it okay so same thing we we'll do the same process of adding the opacity map and then changing And then if you want to clean this, the edges a little bit better, so that they're a bit cleaner, just add a blur. And then a sharpen. Alright, so that's pretty much how I usually do, I usually bake opacity maps using Substance Painter by using the ID map. So I hope this video was helpful and if you liked it, leave a like and add a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, hope you liked the video and if you did, you might be interested in this new tutorial that I made. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create modular buildings like houses and I do this by showing you how to plan and create modular assets that you can later use to create a larger building. So if you're interested in that, check the link in the description below to learn more.